We're here at the Crutchfield Labs and we're trying to answer one of the age-old questions, which is, when I build a car stereo system, what do I do first? So, buckle in, it's gonna be a long bumpy ride, but I think we're gonna have a lot of fun doing this and I think that we'll all benefit from this because we'll actually be able to finally answer the question, where do I start first and what benefit do I get by starting there? So what we've now added to the whole mad scientist equation here is a real-time analyzer or a spectrum analyzer. And this is an audio control piece. And basically what this allows us to do is it allows us to listen to all of the frequencies that the human ear can hear roughly from 25 hertz to, two, to 20,000 hertz. We want to know what this head unit looks like with this speaker combination. And in order to do that, we've put in a stereo pink noise signal. Pink noise um, sounds a lot like um, if you've ever heard white noise generators, you know, people use those to drown out uh, noises in the background. What pink noise is, is basically stereo information, uh, basically random uh, throughout the spectrum and theoretically all the same volume. I tend to like a typical waterfall response. So pretty much um, plus 6 dB from say 25 all the way to about 125 and then at 125 I like it to slope down uh, until it gets to about 200 and then 200 flat all the way out here to about 12 and a half K and then I like it to drop down again I want to be able to get my response as close to the perfect curve as I can so what we've done is we've captured what the frequency response looks like you'll notice that some of the frequencies, it does a pretty good job of matching where my target curve might be, which is, um, you know, maybe around uh, 125. That might be close to where we want it, but it's really over accentuated in the 80 to 100. So, uh, you know, bass guitar, uh, things like that might sound really present. Um, whereas in the mid range to high mid range, like 1.2K, there's going to be a major suck out in the vocals. And then especially that transition point between what would typically be the woofer, the mid-range, to the tweeter, you'll see a spike there. They tried to compensate for that. And then it's a real deep drop-off in that high-frequency response. So that's probably due to the fact that that paper wizard cone tweeter in there uh, can't handle 2.5 to 2K very well. It's going to sound like factory speakers. So with that, we'll move to the next step, which will be putting in aftermarket speakers with the factory head in it and then we'll rerun all of these same set of, of tests okay so now we've got the rta set up again with aftermarket speakers and the factory head unit and you can already see that those rogue frequencies the ones that were really out of whack seem to be coming back into line i think you'll see that all of the spectrum fits easily on the screen now which is about a whole lot better than it was when we started So if we look at this, you'll see that again, we still have really no low frequencies, real no deep bass. In fact, nothing that we would consider really bass in this point. Um, it all falls off quite rapidly. We've still got that spike that, that the uh, factory head unit seems to be really liking, which is around 100 hertz. Um, pretty smooth throughout. Again, you'll see a little bit of a flavor curve. Each manufacturer kind of has their own idea of what their signature sound print should be. These speakers particularly like a little bit more highs and uh, again, overall, a much better response, much smoother through the mid-range. I would expect already that the, that the mid-range will sound much smoother. I still think there's gonna be a lot of muddiness to the bass and that snared or the, uh, the bass guitar and the bass drum because the amplifier in here just really can't play those frequencies well. So next, let's replace the factory head unit with an aftermarket head unit and let's put the factory speakers back in the car. So wow, look at that curve. Already a whole lot better. You can see that the mid bass and the, the, the low bass is still quite smooth, much better than it was before. A lot of these uh, instruments will probably sound a little bit better down there, but I still suspect that we're, we're gonna get this fall off on those low frequencies just because we don't have anything bigger in here than a six by eight. But the mid-range all the way through the highs, much better response all the way through. It's not perfect, of course, 
But look at how much better that, that mid-range, the vocals will probably blend. Also those highs where the cymbal was coming in a little bit hot before. I think you'll see that smoothed out quite a bit through here. And it should make an overall better presence all the way across the music spectrum. Okay, so now we've got aftermarket head unit, aftermarket speakers. And I think you'll see that this curve looks even better than the last one we saw. Certainly the highs are much more defined. That has to do with having a real tweeter, right? I think we've got a, a one inch silk dome tweeter in here. So already better frequency response up here. Much smoother bass response. It's a little more flat than we probably like. But again, we're not really playing much below 80 to 60 to 80 hertz. But overall, I'm pretty impressed with the two basic changes that we've done and uh, made the improvements of the RTA already very noticeable. So next is to listen to it and see how it sounds. I feel like I'm in the kit almost. You get kind of that panning with the drums. Okay, so pretty intensive install day because we've had speakers in, speakers out, head units in, amps out, head units all over the place. But what we're trying to do is trying to define for you, the customer, what's the best step to do first. And I think that with the data that we've collected today, we can clearly say that there's one huge winner, and that's replacing your factory head unit first. That makes easily the biggest difference, at least for the sound quality and the sound performance. Plus, you're gonna get you know, great iPod control, HD radio, Bluetooth, things like that. The stuff that you really want in your car today. And all in all, I think this is a really great learning experience for all of us. We're going to keep plugging away in the labs and uh, hopefully bring you all the information that you need to know.